So when exactly can you label somebody a false prophet? I mean, we know there are a lot of them out there today. In fact, more of them are coming out by the minute, it seems. Michael Brown, Dr. Michael Brown was on a recent podcast and he was asked this very question. And this was really put to him in a way that I think that after he answered the question, he quickly realized that, oops, I made a mistake and I shouldn't have said what I did. And he sort of kind of tried to retract it later on as the podcast continued. But uh, in this, though, addressing prophets, specifically charismatic ones like Mike Bickle, who we know that Brown had been very close to for a time, uh, the question that we're asking, is Mike Bickle a false prophet? But is he a false prophet based off what Michael Brown said in this podcast? Well, we're going to talk about that here in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you in the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. Hey, if you guys are interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I do all of this on my ministry without being able to see? I made a video. I included in the description on all my videos here that explains my entire story. For anybody interested in that, you can check the description. The link is there and you can watch that video. Also, if you would like to bless this ministry with a generous donation, go ahead and hit that super thanks button on the YT video here. And that's how you can bless me. Any contribution you can make, no matter how small or how big it adds up, makes a huge difference. So thank you so much for that. So let's talk about this because Michael Brown, these comments on what defines a false prophet. When can we label them one? When can we call them one? All of that. And the questions were, you know, really poised him here in a way that I think he regretted what he said later on uh, down in the podcast. Now, the question was asked, you know, if a prophet is coming out and they're putting out false prophecy after false prophecy after false prophecy, is it safe to go ahead and label them a false prophet? It would seem obvious that if they're consistently getting it wrong, then that's what we should do. Michael Brown had a very interesting answer to this. And he said, well, it's not quite that clear. Because according to Michael Brown, if you are saved, if you are born again, well, then you can't really be labeled a false prophet. That would include Mike Bickle, apparently, right? Mike Bickle, you know, huge charismatic figure. We know everything that he's under fire for right now, all the inappropriate behavior and everything else like that. But according to Michael Brown, you cannot just slap that label on one of these prophets if they're saved. If they've accepted Christ, that to me is one of the most ridiculous statements that you can make because your salvation has nothing to do with you being a false prophet. Nothing at all. People can be, I, I mean, to even suggest that is absolutely insane to me. You can't hide behind salvation as a means to, you know, continue to put out false prophecy after false prophecy. You just can't do that. And here's another question too, because this is something that I have been saying for a while as it comes to Mike Bickle. Is this somebody who was ever really truly saved? There's a lot of calls for repentance for him, right? And no, oh, please turn from your sin and everything. Repent, repent, repent. Look, with Mike Bickle, it really has to start with the basics and that's first getting saved. Because I don't believe that he is. And the reason that I say that is because if you look at his fruit, we got any fruit inspectors out here? I mean, come on. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The fruit of Mike Bickle is rotten to the core and has been since the very beginning. You can't begin to call yourself a prophet, even really, you know, re repent and turn and go back into the ministry. You can't do any of that if you're not even born again to begin with. It's as simple as that. And, you know, he was pressed on other leaders as well, like Benny Hinn, who, you know, again, an individual who puts out consistent false prophecies, and many others within the charismatic circle. And later on in the podcast, you know, Brown tried to clarify 
things a little bit here by saying that, well, you know, let me, you know, but if they're putting out false prophecy after false prophecy, yeah, I mean, we have to look at that, but they have to want to repent of that as well. And he seemingly tried to backtrack a little bit from the whole, you know, hiding behind the born again label, because look, all that really does, all that really does is just enable more false prophecies and, you know, all of this spiritual manipulation that we've seen from people like Bickle. By the way, if you want to check out the full uh, podcast, uh, the clip, I will uh, have a link for you here in the description of this video. You can check it out there. Um, also, too, guys, if you want to help out the ministry by becoming a patron, this is another way you can help me out. You could sign up for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. The link is in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You're also going to get exclusive links over there to these topics that we discuss. A lot of them that I can't include on YT for obvious reasons, so it's up on the Patreon for you to check out. And also there, you can comment censorship-free on all videos, and you can even send me DMs. So check it out over there, and it's uh, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. And again, remember, you can also hit the super thanks button on the YT video here if you want to bless the ministry out that way as well. I got to say big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. But getting back to this Brown situation, you know, the spiritual manipulation that is tied to false prophecies, this is something that Bickle has basically built his entire so-called ministry on, right? the false prophecies that actually built the International House of Prayer from the beginning, right? Mike called it, it was the prophetic vision. No, it wasn't a prophetic vision. It was it was his own vision, right? It was man's vision, and it turned into his playground. And this went on with him even before the inception of IHOP KC. So to even say that, you know, well, you can't really put that label of false prophet on them if they're saved, it's just... Again, I just I can't even believe somebody like Brown would say that. And even though he kind of seemingly walked away from it later on in the interview, the point is he still said it. And I think the reason that he did was because he is still to this day doing everything he can to protect this false charismatic prophetic movement that we see going out there today. Chris Valadin of Bethel, he's a part of that too. Rick Joyner, there's so many of them. Honestly, you, you lose track of all the names. But I really think that's what Brown was trying to do. He's trying to protect that circle because now more than ever, it's being exposed. We are seeing firsthand. And look, and God's allowing it, okay? God is allowing it to be exposed. All of this dirt is coming out. And, you know, people like Brown, they're doing everything they can to try and protect their friends because they know the walls are closing in on them, right? People are waking up to these lies, the manipulation, all their tactics and everything else like that. And it's a good thing that, he is. Let's also not forget this. The Bible is very clear that there will be false Christs and false prophets that would rise in the last days to deceive many. If you give a false prophet to me right away, you give one, you're one and done. That's it. Okay. Because you shouldn't be given something that ain't coming from the Lord in the first place. I don't need to know your, you know, your salvation status. I'll, I'll slap a prop, a false prophet label on you, whether you're saved or you're not saved. Uh, that is a, a, a horrible manipulative way to go about this issue. But I want to hear from you guys on this. You can sound off down below in the comment section. Is Mike Bickle a false prophet to you? And can you not put that label on him since he is born again and all? Let me know. And remember, I will have more information for you here in the description. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because yes, we are in the last days, really the final hours. Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, 
patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash news. Link in the description. Or just hit the super thanks button down below on this YT video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.